Hi, right, this is Lee, and this is a video of me painting a miniature from Limbo Division 209. Uh, not this one, this one is also from the uh, Limbo Division 209. That's the green only they did uh, last year, obviously last year. Uh, I don't know when exactly, but was the previous release. Uh, this is at a stage that I can still push, but I don't really have any inspirations for it, so I can just leave it at this stage. Uh, uh, the skin tone, the, the shirts, the, the, the robots on the base can all be rendered a lot more, but uh, I'm just gonna leave it here until I have time and I have new ideas to push this forward. Uh, they did a pair of those uh, cyberpunk-ish characters, so it was the red oni and the green oni. Uh, I'm gonna paint the green oni for this video. Uh, oh well, you've seen the, the uh, previous 25 seconds clip, so I, I guess you know what this is. Uh, anyway, the miniature is 35mm scale. They also made 75 one, but uh, I don't really have time nor the scale to paint the big version. I prefer smaller uh, scale miniatures. Um, anyway, the uh, miniature is casted in resin. Uh, they come in multiple parts, it does require assembly, so the uh, right hand uh, with the big sword or claymore is one piece, and then the left arm uh, and the half of the robot's body is one piece, uh, the main body is one piece, I'm just gonna zoom in to let you see the detail, this is all primed obviously, but look at the detail of this resin miniature. Ah, resin. Such good material, isn't it? Uh, right, the main body is in one piece. Uh, I was priming this model with all parts arms all blue tacked together. So there are areas I, that I didn't cover with primer, but it doesn't really matter. You can't really see those areas or they're just gonna be glued together. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, the lower parts, uh, the legs, um, are in one piece, I believe. I don't think they, uh, they come in multiple parts for the legs. But the body on the base is a separate piece. I did glue them already at uh, this moment uh, because it was. It wouldn't cause much issue while painting it because the, 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 the whole pose is such dynamic pose and you wouldn't really uh, worry that your brush can reach to certain areas. Uh, but glue them together will help you define the whole pose and then where uh, the, the, the whole structure uh, stands on. So I just glue them together. Um, Alright, I'm just gonna start with uh, one piece by one piece. Uh, start with the head. Uh, right, just to clarify the two horns on the head, they are separate pieces. You do have to glue them to the head. Uh, I think there was a small accident while painting the head. I well not. I don't. I didn't even know I break the, the one of the horns. So I don't know if it can be called accident. Like I was totally unaware of breaking the the, the part, but then it just broke. Uh, anyway, all the colors, all the paints I use are from Sedol base paints yeah all from base paints so uh Corax white abandoned black um mark rich blue um morphe stone red uh morphin brown uh what else uh i think those are the mainly colors i use potentially ever set sun uh, ever everland sunset uh, as yellow uh, I may add it to the skin tones, but uh, all base paints, no shades, no uh, wash, no contrast, no any of those uh, different kind of paints. Um, did I say Markridge Blue? I also used Markridge Blue for the uh, some of the uh, shadow area for the hair. Uh, right, so this video is about 2 hours 20 minutes long. Uh, this is not like full full version. Uh, I did skip uh, some some like boring process and also I was experimenting with the uh, texture on the robots so I only managed to record part of the robots. Um, 
so the whole miniature was painted in probably for five hours less than five hours I'd say um, considering I did a lot of adjustments uh, off the camera so uh, probably less than five hours maybe just over four which is all right uh, it's it's all right time consuming I uh, I'm willing to spend on those miniatures I if if it, it, it contains like more uh, details or more parts and obviously it'll be more but uh, for this I think uh, it, it's it's a, a, a manageable time um, anyway uh, the skin tones uh, I think I've mentioned this like quite a few times it's purely just white plus brown uh, that's the quickest way you can get a, a quite easy skin tone color and then based on that uh, it is your choice to either make it more reddish or yellowish or uh, shadow areas more brownish or just more paleish adding more white but essentially uh, I start all the skin tones with white plus a little bit brown and then for the the whole face structure the forehead the nose bridge the chin the uh, the, 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 the uh, side of the face the, the, those Highlights area, those shallow areas, they're all rather standard. Uh, considering I never have characters setting in like weird lighting environments, uh, even if walls, it will be either from the side or behind, so it won't really affect the face. So uh, when I paint miniatures, my lighting setup for the character is always like standard lighting. Um, so nothing really special. The, main, the mainly highlights points are the forehead. The nose, the chin, the, those are the uh, mainly highlights points and then you you shadow the side of the faces, uh, depends on the character, if it's female I'd, I'd add more red, uh, if it's like male I'd probably add more just brown and then adding like yellow into the highlights, uh, but for female character I tend to just add uh, white to the highlights area. Uh, and then red for the shadow area. Uh, I mean, obviously, when you are mixing skin tones for female character, you can always just adding red straight away, so you get a little bit pinkish skin tone color, and then you go from there to get either brighter or darker uh, by adding either white or brown or, or, or red, obviously. Uh, but yeah, essentially, that that's uh, how my theory for the skin tone works. Uh, I had a showcase in my previous video. I think it was one of the uh, Little Mermaid uh, from uh, Twist the Fibble. Uh, that, that video, I think I showcased a, a how to achieve a, a skin tone by using just uh, white, brown, and also uh, yellow and red. Um, it's relatively easy to make skin tone out of uh, those colors. Um, right, uh, I think, I think, I think I spent, I don't know, 20 minutes on the face maybe? But essentially just keep adding the highlights to, to make the face structure pumps out. And then, uh, because it's a miniature, so you want the whole light and shadows be stronger than a, a, a standard a, a model or a big statue because the, the, the normal lighting will cast the shadows correctly well in miniatures it won't you have to enhance the lighting and the shadow areas manually as in make it darker make it brighter to to let uh, people to let self see it directly if it's you know the details are pumps up um, I don't know how long I spent on this head to be honest. I think it was uh, rather 20-30 minutes maybe and then the uh, the eyes uh, are more tricky as you may or may not get them like correctly done at once or maybe twice or even three times. Uh, just it's just time consuming thing once you uh, know where your character is looking at you're just trying to paint the pupils following that focus 
and then if it if if it paints correctly, it paints correctly. If it doesn't, you just have to keep modifying it, and then until you get a, a result that you are satisfied. Um, but do not just like there are other skin tones around the eyes. Like the, the, you have the upper uh, the 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 uh, eyelids, and then you have the lower part of the eyelids and then, then those are all the structures you should not ignore and then f just follow the the miniature if a miniature is good enough they should have all those structures uh modeled already and then you just paint the the, the just the eyeball bit white and then try to paint the pupils alternatively you can paint just the whole eyeball black and then you figure out the focus and then you paint the white on top of it uh, it's just a uh, different ways to achieve a uh, standard ice painting. Um, lips. Uh, I think I've mentioned this in the uh, Little Mermaid result video as well. So for lips, I mainly just focus on the lower part of the lips because uh, as a miniature, you don't really see that many details. Not as much as a big scale model or statue. So the upper lips will most likely be under a shadow area and then you don't really see the reflections on it or well it depends on the miniature obviously it depends on the model how the sculptor modeled it you may not just see the, the the upper lips like fully so i choose to just to highlight the lower parts of the lips and then it'll be just red uh, well, it depends on the character, and then you choose to apply a, a different, I don't know, different color of red, and then you add in white just to get the uh, one single line of highlights on the lips will do. If you want more detail, you can try to trace all those uh, structures on the lips, because lips uh, are structured into like a a a, a really interesting way like you can see all those vertical uh, cracks and highlights on the lips so you can you can try to um, achieve that but I think those are more for 75 uh, millimeter scale or even bigger uh, for 35 millimeter scale or smaller wise I think one horizontal line of highlights will just do the job uh, for the hair uh, the character has white hair, but uh, white does not necessarily mean just pure white. Uh, I've tried to paint uh, white with just black and white, um, but those the, 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 those are more, I don't know, deadish color. You want the miniatures to be colorful, be brighter, and then black does not really bring you that black will enhance the whole structure but will not bring your miniature a more colorful way so for uh, white I tend to using dark blue as a shadow of the white color well at least for now I uh, and uh, for this character so uh, if it's a, a, a in this case the, the highlights will just be uh, white and then for all the shadows adding blue to create a, a, a lighter blue but blue uh, color as the shadows uh, I think I skipped this part for this miniature painting but you're gonna you're gonna see at the end of, uh, end of this this part I'm trying to get the eyes sorted so you see it's not just a whole eye socket the whole eye area is not just white it, it has this upper parts of the the human skin to cover the eyeball it also has the lower part of the 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 skin to cover the eyeball if 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 the miniature modeled it obviously but the, the, in this case uh, it has the the uh, eyelashes only not not the whole structure of the uh, lower parts of the uh, eyelids uh, anyway the character is said to look to her left so the eyeballs will be to the character's left which in the video is to uh, the viewer's right hand side um, 
I managed to get the character's left eye sorted like easily uh, because it's the left eye and I'm right-handed so it'll be easier uh, for the right side of the eye uh, it's a little bit more tricky because the nose is right in the way and it, it, it just kind of not conveniently painted but uh, again uh, I paint all black and then trying to uh, cover the white just slight bit on the sides to get the eyes sorted. Um, I think I struggled quite well here trying to get the the shape of the eyes um, symmetrical uh, because uh, because that that's what happened. I was trying to highlight the uh, the the uh, eyelids and then the eyes the, the shape of the eyes don't seem like too symmetrical I'm trying it just looks a bit weird so every single minor difference on a miniature will cause a huge difference when you look at because they're so small and then the whole scale is small and then so all the minor issues you think it may just be exaggerated because of the whole small scale um, so here I am trying to paint the uh, left side of the eye the second time trying to get the uh, shape the eye sorted corrected uh, this, this took me quite a while and it's, it's about 16 minutes now and uh, see the, 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 the whole shape of the upper side of the left eye is a bit too flat I was trying to get a, a relatively curved ish shape and then uh, that's me being struggling trying to get it right again if you paint if you're painting eyes if it didn't work out first time you cover it you paint second time if second time doesn't work you cover it you paint third time and uh, do keep in mind all paints comes with a, uh, a a sort of sickness so you do not want to retry too many times as the paints will end up covering the details of the actual miniature uh, when you are reaching that level you may want to use either sandpaper or something sharp and small enough to just pick out those uh, extra layer of paints and then clean it up and then so you can start refresh it mm, so you still a little bit just on the the, the, the upper side of the, the eye it feels like the eyelash is not painted correctly um, it's just one of those moments you are really struggling trying to get it right but you can just always a little bit off uh, this is where I was I'm trying to uh, I, I think I was just trying to paint someone somewhere else and then to, to get a fresh eye to look at this eye again see just just a tiny little bit on the eyelashes on the, the, the upper eyelashes of the left eye just a tiny little bit there uh, I think I managed to get it sorted, but it was just it was really struggling moment. And here I overpaint the skin tone color on in, into the eyes and trying to get the pupils corrected again. Uh, I think that's 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 sorted. That that's uh, me satisfied with the result more or less. Um, I like to use a lot of black in those small scale miniatures as um, well a lot of people saying don't don't use like pure black black uh, for shadows or you know the, the, the areas you can see I do agree with that but in a lot of areas that, that you you don't really see it but you do want those two parts be separated I would say just use black to, to separate two different colors especially the uh, the inner side of the hair and the face you want the hair pumps out you can for one you can highlight the hairs even more or two just just to create a really well not 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 thick but not not thick but a, a, a very strong black line in between to to separate the, the hair and the face which is what I was doing there trying to get the hair and the whole face structure separated and because it's like miniature you want a very strong contrast on the model anyway 
so it doesn't really matter but obviously if you want more uh, colorful on your miniature you should try to use a, a, a darker color rather than just pure black to do this like you can achieve this by using a lot of very uh, contrasted colors like if you have a, a uh, let's see if you have a like a brown uh, or ginger hair color and then you can uh, paint the 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 hair shadows uh, the shadow area of the hair into like really darker red and then they'll separate your hair color from your skin like a lot you don't necessarily need to use black uh, but again it's it's, it's just a, a easier way to separate two different colors just paint a black line in between uh, but you you don't want this 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 specific black line to be too much as it will be a weird cell shading effects and then uh, if your whole painting style isn't really cartoonish or cell shading then it will be just extremely weird so it, it, it has to be a very thin black line in between colors to, to create a clean like difference for those colors otherwise it will be just kind of weird so uh, practice more and then to uh, see if this works out for you or not again alternatively just use darker color and then or or just use wash or uh, other shades uh, like uh, uh, or even contrast to, to create a a, 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 uh, a a paints that can flow into those gaps to fill those gaps with a, a darker color rather than trying to use brush to trace through those gaps uh, again that's just the uh, personal preferences and uh, choice you you, you, you you made to, to paint miniatures ways you use to paint miniatures methods you use to paint miniatures uh, it's about 20 minutes right uh, I think I'll shut up now and then uh, I'll let you just peacefully watch through well, most part of the video till the uh, robot bit I'm still struggling with the eyes great great all right, I'll shut up for now, and hopefully you enjoy the rest of it.
Right, so uh, this is almost there. Uh, I've painted the, uh, the 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 part of the the robot's body underneath the character's uh, feet already, and then I paint part of the one that she's holding. Uh, Cause the original concept of for this character, the robot has like a very clean white color. It's like. Uh, Painted metal ish, but then the uh, green only I did does not share the same. I, I I do want them to have like a similarity, so I did like a rough metal color for the green only's uh, robots. I would like to do the similar uh, for the red only as well. Uh, so that would, I tried out a little bit, and then uh, I think that's achievable. So that's just the way I'm going to paint the robots in, green, uh, in red only as well. So the color uh, used are mainly just black and white, maybe a little bit blue, I can't really remember it. But essentially you need a fine brush and then just trying to each highlighting the structure and when it comes to like large surface, like flat surface, uh, you paint like those uh, uh, lines in between, like in a way, like the, the, uh, like all the uh, reflect lights on metal are like a straight lines. It just depends on the angle of it, but uh, those are essentially the lines you're gonna follow into those uh, small pieces of metals. But you treat the whole uh, metal parts as in 
uh, one big part. So your lines need to match up with all other parts. It's going to be parallel lines following the same angle, the same well, thickness doesn't really matter. So it's the same angle. So uh, I, I painted a few lines on the the, uh, or the left side of this robot's body. So I'm going to do the same here and then trying to make them like following the same angle but it's not like very uh, restricted but you definitely do not want them into opposite angles it will be just weird uh, you do want to treat the whole piece as in a whole metal parts and then the reflections is onto the surface of it and just being shattered into different small pieces but the whole highlighting the angle of the highlights are the same and then just keep each hiding those small pieces and then trying to um, you could use dry brush but I feel like dry brush this this, this kind of area will uh, create um, I don't know uh, I, uh, I think it'll work it will not work as good as it do it you know manually uh, especially with those edge highlighting, you want those edge highlighting be very thin line just on the edge. So if you use um, dry brush, it may spread the paint to the the, the uh, it will create a really nice gradient on the edge rather than a very strong sharp lines on the edge. Maybe I'm not entirely sure. Well, you can try it out anyway. But essentially, just just try, just trying to keep each highlighting those, uh, those those parts and then uh, enhance the highlights in between and then trying to uh, get the uh, shadows which I think I just used black abandoned black in, in those parts um, yeah essentially just each highlighting using using a fine brush use the side of the brush trying to each highlighting all those parts relatively easy relatively easy you you can mix into uh, mix blue color into it to create a, a, a colorful like still ish metal color I'm not entirely sure if I did it here or not I, I don't I don't think I think it's just pure black and white uh, but yeah that that's essentially how how you draw like uh, a, a, a raw metal parts with with some sort of reflections on it at least in this miniature
All right, so this is pretty much uh, end of the video, and then this is where this miniature is at right now. Uh, I think that the the level of uh, paint job is relatively finished. Well, I didn't paint the base obviously, but uh, the base base, not the robots. But I didn't paint the base of the green only as well, so that's the whole pair of it. They are at a similar finishing level. Uh, not like finish, finish. I, I feel like I can still push them forward. Um, especially the, the green Oni. I think that the red Oni has a, a better finish level than the green Oni, considering I, I painted, you know, blast. But they are more or less at the similar. Uh, finishing level. Uh, Alright, anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I shall have some Marvel Zombies painting videos up in next few days or weeks maybe. I I've been painting Marvel Zombies quite a lot, quite a lot. Alright, I'll see you next time then.